Hey guys, it's Jim. So you recognize this handsome man, Michael Gillis. He is Harry in our uh, wonderful hit production of Mamma Mia. So first and foremost, congratulations, man. You are absolutely wonderful in it. You're brilliant you. in it. Thank Audience you. love you and the show yeah. and everybody's just raving about it, man. It's, it's just fun on a stick. It and really is. Fun it's that. Just, we should use that in stick. marketing. <laughs> Mamma Mia, fun on a stick. And then we'll put a little, give you yeah. a little tag on Michael yeah. Gillis. Yeah. Cool. And it's the first time you've worked for us as well, right? Absolutely, first time, yeah. And how's your experience been? It could not, it could not be better, have been better. It's uh, Jim Cordy is, it, it lives up to all the amazing things you hear about him. Tommy Vindafredo is a star is rising. And he's just unbelievable. And everybody else as well as the backstage and everything is just top notch out here. Right it's on. top notch. So I'm going to reel off some of the things that you've done. And some of the really cool things that you've done is not the traditional route of how you yeah. ended up here. Now, yeah, I should yeah. say, uh, initially, you're from Barrington, uh -huh. and then uh, you ended up going to Northwestern. Yeah. So you have done, you know, you've worked all over the place, including you were on a national tour of Phantom. Yeah. You also on an international tour of uh, Jesus Christ Superstar mm -hmm. as Jesus. Yeah. And also an uh, international tour of West Side Story as Tony. Yep. And then all of a sudden, uh, you decided that you were going to stay in Europe for a while, yeah. for a yeah. little bit. And but you ended up doing all this amazing stuff yeah. even in between. Yeah, right? uh, I guess the easiest, quickest way to explain it is, um, I felt you know I, was, I played Ralph for uh, I did it six months in Toronto, and I felt like I had I didn't have a lot of life to bring to stage anymore, and so I wanted to go live life. And, uh, and, and just kind of, so I had things to bring. And, and so my 30s was basically just like, again, learning how to weld, learning how to carpet. I, I, I worked crew on sets. I, 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 my wife is on Wicked. And, uh, and, you know, so I would help load in, load out. As we you had, sold merch yeah, for sold Wicked? Sold merch, a uh, managed merch. Correct me if I'm wrong, you've yeah. been a dresser yeah. for Disney on Ice. Disney on Ice, yeah. Baltimore, Baltimore Opera. Baltimore Opera dresser, yeah, yeah. So, but what so a was cool experience, and, though, like to take yeah. all that in. Yeah, I, I like to think that, um, you know, my first 10 years in theater was kind of seeing everything through the actor's eyes, and the next 10 years was sort of this different vantage point that I got to know theater around and everything that went into it, which makes me so much more appreciative of the opportunity to now go back and be on stage because I just know all the things that go into it. And, and again, how wonderful you guys are and how easy you make it for us to be on stage. But you know, in, in reality, I can't tell you the amount of people who have romanticized about doing what you did. Like you lived in Paris mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. lived on friends' couches in yeah. Europe and you did all those things and took in all that experience that everybody wishes they could do. Yeah. And you're the dude who actually is the one yeah. who did it. Man. Yeah. It's, uh, although I, I do, it was an amazing experience though. 30s was, I call it my decade of no. Because when you live on a lot of couches, there's a lot of no's that go along with, eh, maybe you can, you don't need to stay here that much anymore. <laughs> so really, it was a perfect one for an actor as well, because so much of your job, people realize like half the job's rejection. Mm -hmm. Do 50 auditions, don't forget one or two roles, so no is a common word and for And no is, I got, I got real used to no, real good with dealing with no, absolutely. <laughs> I, I have to ask, so what's it like to be on an international tour, especially on the size of like a Jesus Christ or West Side Story? It's, you know, uh, it is, uh, it's, it's fantastic. It, I, I will say that uh, doing a role like that, um, another reason I wanted to go and live there, because I did. I was there for two and a half years touring, but playing a role like Jesus, you, you don't get to do much, um, because you know, you're singing high C's, you're suspended on a cross for 15 minutes. You know, it's, it's very physical as well as emotionally intense, so most of my time was just preparing for the role in the night, and I'm an avid museum goer, I'm an avid, uh, you know, kind of just tourist in general. And so, you know, while playing Berlin, I didn't get to see Berlin like I wanted to see it. Right. So going back there, I, that, that was kind of my opportunity to see the country as is. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. And you are also the artistic director of a really cool organization, mm -hmm. a really cool, cool theater called Ford Theater Project. Mm -hmm. And we know you guys well at the Paramount and you do, you, you do some really cool events over at City Winery. So why don't you share with everybody what Ford yeah. Theater Project uh, is? Ford Theater Project uh, with uh, Paramount's own Amber Mack, who was really the brainchild of it. She, she thought of the whole thing and, and brought me on board, which I'm grateful for. Um, we, we basically uh, take new musicals and produce, produce them in one night only reading events to try to forward the art form. I mean, you know, and, and so we do focus on new musicals. But with, with that being said, uh, we also enjoy finding new talent, 
to perform those musicals, uh, you know, finding new directors to that, or even uh, we've had a couple actors that have wanted to make the transition into directing. So it's a it's a good opportunity for them to start to start and be getting known in the community. So you know, we we are about finding new pieces and getting them to move on, but we're also about just the enlargement of Chicago's theater in general. Yeah, and I've got to say, you know, and, and the Amber Mac that he's referring to is also, she's a director with us. She did uh, Hairspray last mm -hmm. year with us. And she's doing Little up, Mermaid yep. this year. Mm -hmm. And um, she's also the head of our New Works division yes. here on staff. Which is the perfect kind of transition for her from, I mean, it, it is, you, uh, it, it's a full-time job almost, with, but that's not a job because we just sort of created it. Uh, right. And, you know, because we, we get uh, about, a, uh, the first year we had 200, this year, this year we've got about 120 submissions, so we have to read every musical. So you also get a very well-rounded idea of what's out there and what's good and what's bad. You know, so it's, it's really, a, it's, it's a labor of love, but it's well worth it. Wow. So I have to ask this question, and, and going back for a second for, you know, putting on that backpack and traveling Europe, yeah, you're married, uh, your wife's in Wicked mm -hmm. and tour, and if you guys ever had kids and your kid came to you and said, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to go to Europe Absolutely for the not. next nine months. <laughs> <laughs> hey, knowing the experiences that you had yeah, once yeah. you're Absolutely dad, not. No. Uh, no, I, actually, I would highly recommend it to anybody. It is, it is a, uh, y you know, to see the other cultures, to live, and uh, I always think that, um, you know, the a lot of times the way we travel is in is on buses and we look out windows and we're we're basically traveling as Americans inside of an American adventure you know and so we don't so to uh, to live with Europeans to live I, I lived in Peru for a little bit and to live with other cultures and to to just uh, you know to eat food you're not used to to have conversations you don't understand because you don't speak the language and they have to translate you is a is an experience that it, it just makes you so much more empathetic to what's going on in the world, and I, I would highly recommend it. And if I if I do, hopefully, me and my wife have children, I would I would want them to do that absolutely. So my last question, because I got to let you go before you have dinner tonight, and that is, um, you, you had some time off between last time you did a show, mm -hmm. and then here is really the first. Do you get the butterflies? Do you, or was it when you came back? You're like, this is it, man. I'm ready to rock this thing. No, uh, Jim has been. I get almost. Um, Jim has been wonderful. He's he's uh, he he allowed me to 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 take the four weeks of rehearsal, which is just such a blessing that Paramount gives you that long to work out all the all the snafus that comes with that much time off, and and to kind of make and, and to allow me to go full into the pitfalls, so that by the time I got on stage in front of an audience, I had worked all those kinks out, and I and I didn't have as many butterflies because yeah, if I didn't have somebody like Jim steering the ship it, it would the transition would not have been as easy so I'm, I'm very blessed and thankful for that well look we're thankful for you to be a part of this organization we couldn't be more thrilled about it you're a wonderfully talented artist so look come see Michael and uh, all of his castmates with Mama Mia and thanks Please. man thank you for being a part of this thanks for taking the time right now Absolutely. to uh, hang out with us we really appreciate it thank you very much